Vagabond is renowned for its artwork. It's a story about a wandering samurai, Miyamoto Musashi, and his quest to find purpose in his life. It's a very stimulating series, as strong themes of identity, war, and society are explored in a really mature manga that pairs with one of the best art styles in the entire medium. At its lowest quality, it's a really interesting style that's more of an outline, of a hearkening to ukiyo-e paintings, classical Japanese paintings that resemble the idea of these characters' appearances. And at its height, it resembles an image so beautiful that it almost transcends reality and gives us more of a hyper-reality, or a portrait, into the mental condition of these characters. The artistic evolution of Vagabond is a particularly unique one, because this isn't a series which starts at its weakest and keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Like all of the other series that I've covered, from the offset, Vagabond is a gorgeous manga. And technically, it never isn't gorgeous. But there is a rise and fall to it in between different key moments of the series, and it makes for really fascinating analysis. This is a manga written by Takahiko Inoue, a very successful manga artist who earned his claim to fame through Slam Dunk, a highly popular weekly shonen jump series that ran in the early 90s. Even then, Inoue's artwork was really something to behold, as he captures the human figure and the different movements and moods that the characters expel with a unique and bold style. His tools are quite simple, but unlike what most mangaka adopt, most manga artists use G-pens with ink and have more recently transferred to a digital environment. Inoue, however, typically uses ink with an assortment of brushes to create these really swift, smooth, sleek lines that encapsulate that effort to portray Edo Japan. Where he used to use G-Pen and ink, specifically in Slam Dunk, Inoue learnt and obtained expert control of Menso brushes, which can produce lines as thin or as thick as the illustrator desires and are notoriously difficult to master. Inoue prefers the unrefined nature of this method to line art saying that it feels more real through its unpredictability. The uncertainty of the lines is something that heightened the natural tone of his pictures. He even gets really upset when these images don't come out the way he wants because of this very method, despite how likely it is for ink to run, or to accidentally brush the wrong way, or for a few bristles to go too far, and above it all, it still pays off. The usage of ink like this is transferable to instantly give off believable blood, mud, and streak-like effects, Inoue's skills as an artist are incomparable considering, for the first 300 chapters, Vagabond released in a weekly magazine. And whilst it didn't release every single week, it released more often than not for some of the most stellar chapters for years and years. Though when it moved to a monthly magazine, we saw the coming and going of better and slightly worse artwork much more often. Going from really complex illustrations to sometimes more simpler artwork is a really interesting thing to observe throughout the series. Vagabond stretches out like a long road where, every now and then, there are these incredible speed bumps of inspiration, where Inoue just paints his absolute heart out onto these panels. In periods where Inoue's really inspired, you can reflexively see the amount of life that bursts out of these pages. Just like the life of Miyamoto Musashi, a man who drifts around and occasionally finds purpose and hones into it, only to lose that motivation entirely. Inoue's evolution is something spurred on completely by his own artistic motivations that come in full force and then wane and disappear before another takes its place. You can see this in the excitement of the young death Kojiro backstory and the swift change to the farming story arc, a hopeful, tender chapter of growth and bonding to the lost and curious tone of helping out a struggling farm. The artwork reflects not only Inoue's inspiration but the story's progression as well. As we have an emotional and thrilling story set in the past, we have vivid eye-catching imagery that oozes with feeling. As we have a more thoughtful, pondering, and deliberate arc, we have more still, pensive artwork that usually has a singular focal point to connote Musashi's focus, but to also concentrate that artwork with a pertinency of white backgrounds. I've come to the opinion over the years that the farming arc isn't worse, per se, than any other arc, but that it's doing something very different, and whether or not the artistic change was purposeful or not, it absolutely ends up serving the plot one way or another. After the farming arc, things started progressing towards what would have been the setup for a potential climax to the series, and the artwork started changing its focus from what the farming arc itself changed from the original manga, furthering the idea that the artistic evolution of Vagabond is something that ebbs and flows, 
something that wanders and explores the varied avenues of existence like its protagonist. Obviously, after this period, Inoue left the series to pursue a career in coaching a basketball team. And that was two years ago, and he said, almost consolidating this theory of mine, that as he is right now, he can't finish the story without knowing when he'd return to it, if ever. In fairness, rather than portray Musashi's later life in his enlightened state, Inoue apparently always wanted to depict him as a young man, reaching that point of enlightenment when he comes from a place of being so like an animal. And that's kind of something that he managed to accomplish before leaving the series on hiatus. When Musashi manages to save the village from famine by learning to control and harvest the nature around him, it's the most humane and civil he acts to a group since the start of the story. And that similarity between artwork and story is present once again, as perhaps the true artistic evolution of Vagabond, that the more hyper-real style and usage of ink and brush to illustrate all sorts of slashes and wounds and mental characteristics is this more animalistic, inhuman effect to make the reader step back and go, whoa. And that the more sensible design is there to be straightforward and familiar because of its humanity, and because Musashi has begun that path to enlightenment. Considering that's where Inoue's intention to begin the series came from, it's no surprise that this was the last we heard from him, because in a way, we practically saw an ideological end to the story. Maybe a little prematurely, but it adds up all the same. Inoue has, in recent years, returned to author the manga series, Real. Real was another manga series that he left behind to pursue this career change, but Real is focused on basketball, and I think it would be fair to say that this career change may have acted as the inspiration for him to carry on with another burst of creativity. Perhaps one day, like Musashi, Inoue will find happiness with his life choices and find his way back onto this path, find that next bump of inspiration, and find the artistic inspiration that Vagabond needs to keep evolving.